Welcome everybody, it's Junk Dump, and today we're going to talk about the valley end rails on the Oldsmobile engine. Now there's a lot of discussion about these. When to use your typical silicones, and when to use your rubber end gaskets. There's a measurement that you can take that will give you a better indication on when it's better to use the silicone and when it's best to use the rubber end seals. Personally, the rubber end seals have worked great for me. I've never had one leak. I've never had any issues with these. If your gap is too big, you're going to get leaks past these. There's just no way around it, um, except for putting some silicone on them, which I don't recommend. Um, one or the other. Typically you can get away with these, especially on stock rebuilds and such, but a lot of it depends on what you're using for your intake gaskets. I find that's what makes the biggest difference. If your Ohls engine valley end rails are between 120 thousandths of an inch and 163 thousandths of an inch, then you're good to use these. You'll put a little dab of silicone in the corners, and that's it and then you put these in place and you're good to go you will not find any leaks these are excellent they work very well however if you're using a thick intake gasket or you've had a lot of machine work done and your gap is larger than 163 thousandths then you're going to want to use the silicone and put a silicone bead that's thicker than this obviously across your end rails. Now that's going to depend on certain things. To make this measurement, you're going to need an old compressed head gasket. I keep my head gaskets and my intake gaskets off from all my builds for this measurement specifically. Get a set of used, already compressed intake gaskets, whatever you're going to be putting on new. If you're going to be using a valley tray or you're going to be using those um, the metal ones like this, then you'll want to put these in place. Torque your manifold into place. Move to the front and rear of the engine, make your measurement, and again, if it's between 120 thousandths or 163 thousandths, then you've got plenty of space for this. If you're larger or smaller than that, use some silicone. So with that being said, let's go out in the garage. So I'll start by demonstrating the metal style gaskets. This is typically what you use for an OE rebuild. Um, let's start by installing the intake gaskets. And then we're going to install the manifold itself and then torque it all into place. You'll note that I've intentionally left out the seals on the ends, and that's because we're going to measure that space. I make my measurements using a dial caliper. I like dial calipers, they're accurate, they're easy to make um, measurements with. Uh, I don't use electronics, I've, I've had issues with them um, being finicky in the past. So, The front end rail gap is 134 thousandths, or 0 0.134 inches. Then we're going to move to the rear, where that gap measures out at 0.123 inches. With these measurements, I would use the OE style rubber gaskets on this end. And now I'm going to demonstrate the same measurement, but this time we're going to be using the performance style intake gaskets. And uh, you're going to see a pretty big significant difference in that gap measurement.
Now that front measurement for the valley end rail gap comes out to 175 thousandths, and the rear end rail gap came out to 165 thousandths of an inch. So in this engine, I would use RTV silicone. 